Well, I'm going to music special And can't you tell that I feel swell I'm gonna clap along and sing my favorite song And all the listen music special Hello everyone, welcome back to music class. Next week we won't have a class because it will be Thanksgiving break. That's a good time for us to think about the things that we're thankful for. One of the things that I'm most thankful for is music itself. I'm thankful that my mom made me take piano lessons when I was a kid, even though there were many days I didn't want to practice and many days I didn't want to go to lessons. I'm really glad that she made me take those because it's changed my life. Now music is a big part of my life every day. What are some of the things that you're thankful for? I'm also thankful for you, that you come to this class and that you pay attention and that you participate. In this week's lesson, we're going to play a little game of high or low. We'll learn about the trombone. And we'll also practice some of the rhythms that we learned about last week. So join me as we learn something new. What instrument is that? Oh, what instrument is that? How does it sound? Where is it found? But first of all, you must tell me now. What instrument is that? Okay, everyone, we'll learn about the trombone this week. Allow me to read this card to you. The trombone is a brass instrument distinguished by a long U-shaped slide that is used instead of valves to change pitch. Trombones come in alto, tenor, and bass versions. The tenor and bass trombones are in the key of B flat, although the bass has a larger bell and wider range. Trombones are used in jazz bands, popular music, military bands, marching bands, orchestras, and wind ensembles. The trombone is actually the instrument that I played in high school band. It's been about 15 years or so since I've played the trombone, but I really used to love it as an instrument, and I still do. It has a beautiful sound, and you can do so many different things with it. We'll watch a couple of people perform really experts at the trombone, much better than I ever was at playing it and you'll be able to see some of the different hear some of the different sounds that it can make and see the interesting way which it can be played. Let's talk about this card a little bit more though. The trombone is a brass instrument. Well, that's just telling us what the trombone is made out of generally. Brass instruments are those that are yellow and shiny in the orchestra, like a trumpet or a tuba. Those are also brass instruments. It uses a long U-shaped slide instead of valves to change pitch. Valves on an instrument means buttons, basically. On a trumpet, you would play it by pushing different buttons down as you blow into it. On a trombone, you move the slide. The further you push the slide, the longer the slide becomes, the lower the note. The tenor and bass trombones are in the key of B-flat, although the bass has a larger bell and wider range. So the bass trombone is a bit bigger. The bell on the trombone is that the big part that the sound comes out of. And it's bigger on a bass trombone. Bass trombone, the sound can go lower on that than it can on the tenor trombone, which is the most common kind of trombone. Trombones are used in jazz bands, popular music, military bands, marching bands, orchestras, and wind ensembles. So these are some of the places that we can see trombone music performed. Now we're going to watch a couple of great trombone performers. One's named Martin Wilson. The other is Wycliffe Gordon. These aren't people who are really, really famous rock stars or anything, but they are masters at the trombone. The first one that we're going to listen to, Martin Wilson, he plays a more standard kind of trombone, what you would hear in an orchestra. And the second one that we're going to listen to, Wycliffe Gordon, he uses a mute. He sticks that inside the bell of the trombone. You'll be able to see that. And then he also uses the end of a plunger on the bell to kind of shape the sound that he's making as he plays. 
He plays more of a jazz kind of style. And we'll see both of those now. Let's watch. <laughs> So that was the trombone. Now let us practice a little bit of the rhythm that we learned about last time. Let's put up a half note, a quarter note, and another quarter note. Now let's clap it together. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. 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 Okay, good. Let's try another one. Quarter note. Quarter note. Quarter rest. Quarter note. Let's clap it together. One, two, ready, go. One, two, rest, four. One, two, three, 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 four. So each of these lasts for one beat. The only difference, of course, is that we don't make a sound on the rest. Okay, let's do just one more. An eighth note all by itself. And here's something new, an eighth rest. The eighth rest, of course, is just like the quarter rest, except that it only lasts for the same amount as this eighth note, which is one half of a beat. Then we'll finish off this measure by putting in some more eighth notes. Okay, are you ready for this? I know it looks complicated. So let's see if we can figure it out before we start clapping. If you remember these each, la well, each of these pairs lasts for one beat. So instead of the quarter note, which was one, two, three, four, these would be one, two, three, four. These two together are basically the same as these two together, except we only make sound on one of them, and then we take a rest for the second one. So let's see if we can count this together. One, two, ready, go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, thank you for participating. Now let's play a quick game of high or low.
listening, fast listening, and using my brain to help me to decide. Okay, for high or low today, let's use some more of those sound effects that we were using last time. Not only should you try to determine whether the second note is higher or lower than the first, you should also try to decide what kind of sound we're listening to. So here's note number one. Note number two. Note number two was higher that time, and the sound effect was that of a door creaking. Let's find another. Let's see what this sounds like. Note number one. Note number two. Note number two was lower that time, and that sound effect was called a scratch. I'm just walking down the keyboard right now with my fingers so you can hear the difference between the higher scratches and the lower scratches. Let's continue. Oh, this might sound nice. Note number one. Note number two. Well, those were wind chimes, and there were a lot of different notes that it played. Note number two, or the series of notes for the second example, was higher than the first. How about this? And... That was a helicopter sound effect. And note number two was higher that time. Let's play one more time. Okay, note number one. Note number two. Note number two was lower that time, and the sound effect I was using was a car engine. Well, thank you for coming again and for paying attention, and I'll see you next time. Well, I'm going to music special, and can't you tell that I feel swell? I'm gonna clap.